Ribbit. This is Logan and this past weekend I got my first invite to nationals at the Toronto Regionals by playing Paleo Frogs. And I actually got to do a really sick deck profile video with Team Sam which was awesome. Love the dude a lot. Respect him. He's an awesome guy. If you haven't seen it already, we'll link it. You'll see it. You'll probably see it before you see this video. But it's there. Even though I did the profile with Sam, I wanted to do my own profile that shows some combos because it's more constructed. And when I did Sam's video, I was exhausted and sweating and hot and tired and had just played nine rounds of Swiss for 10 plus hours that I was not in my prime state. So I wanted to do this video to show you guys everything in a more in-depth and meaningful manner. So let's do it! Starting out, mandatory things. Three soft frog. Uh, most important card in the deck, obviously. Uh, he's the foolish for your froggies. You wanna special him out by ditching a water monster, which in this case is gonna be one of your frogs, and then you have the ability to bounce him back to use him as an extra normal summon. You're basically foolishing twice off of him. You can ditch Ronin Toten and a dupe frog, or both Ronins, we'll go into that later. If you get him in grave, and you can just special and go right into toad turn one if you can see him and one of their frog. If not, you can still normal summon him, do the ditch. He's great, he's broken, he's amazing. Next, we have another good boy who's right there. Um, three Dupe Frog. He's amazing because whenever you get Toad on field and you want to detach in the standby phase, you detach and then summon out him from the deck. And then he's just like a 2000 wall. You have a defense position and his effect is they have to attack this card first. So you have Toad protection and you can use him to basically be the Omni to gate for Toad, which is great. If you happen to have him get beaten into from attack or whatever, you can use his effect to basically add a frog to your hand and it's great. And so then you just have your play started for the next turn and it's pretty red. Next up is two not three, Rotototin. You want him in grave as much as possible. He recurs like crazy. You just banish a frog, special summon him out. He's not a hard once per turn. Two Rotototin is the way to go. You don't need three. Two is just a perfect number because you search it, you send it, you do everything with it. That's all you need. All right, on to hand traps. Um, I only play three in this deck. Ash Blossom because she's great. She's super versatile in this format and she's pretty much all you need. I used her all the time. She resolved every single time and she's the bomb. And then if you want to consider it a hand trap, we're moving into traps, but could be a hand trap. Not always. Impermanence. Obviously, this card is bananas. First turn, second turn, set it, get a paleo out. It's great. It's awesome. Moving on to paleos, because those are the majority of the traps and the deck, we have three Morella to start. It's basically your foolish burial. Very rarely will it get ashed if they ash you, they're wrong. And it's good for deck thinning purposes. If you know what you don't need that's a paleo, you can ditch it to the graveyard. It also just gets your stuff started. You get paleos in grave and you can just start chaining the left and right and Morella just gets you there a lot faster. Next we have three Canadia. It's basically Book of Moon. Whenever you have a problematic big monster that's gonna come in and beat the crap out of you, you can say no, flip them upside down. Basically use this again pretty much any matchup. Card's good for when monsters have activated effects and you basically want to just shut it down before it even gets there. You can basically activate Canadia, shut it down before it even gets there. Canadia's great if you're playing against Thunder or Orcus or anything that has a big monster coming at you that's an Xyz or a Fusion or whatever. You can just book a moon it, chain, get your Paleo and stop it before it can, you know, kill you. Uh, and then they basically just have to sit there with their monster flip face down because they just went through everything to get those monsters out and it's really nice. And then we have three Illinoides. It's just a little MST. I didn't encounter a lot of back row, but whenever anyone said anything, I basically shut it down in their end phase. We have two Dynamiscus. I don't play three just because you're ditching cards for it and I don't want to overkill that. When I was playing three, it almost got bricky because you don't always want to be banishing cards. It wasn't necessary and honestly two is fine and you can search it off trap trick. Then three trap trick. Amazing card. Can't really say no to it. Anytime I needed anything at any point, didn't matter. Trap trick got whatever I needed. It's basically a sixth copy of any trap in your deck. Next is one of my favorite cards that I played over the weekend that I added last minute and was really glad it worked out. Three lost win. I did not have this in my deck literally before Saturday. I put three in just for the heck of it because there's a lot of effect monsters and I know they're all gonna be special summons. So I put in the three lost win because right in damage or whenever you just flip lost wind, they're cut in half, their effects are negated and it's permanent. So when the next turn comes around, they're like, mm, enter battle. It's like, mm, no, you're not, you're half. I mean, you can, but you're gonna, you're gonna kill yourself. So it's amazing. And if they're trying to go at Toad or even if they're trying to go at Dupe Frog, you basically stop them and then they put damage on themselves and then they lose their own monster. It's hysterical. Also, it's great because it resets itself anytime they summon from the extra deck. Best card. 
Compulse. Compulse is amazing because basically your opponent's gonna go through all these resources and pretty much all this effort to get out one of their big monsters and then you just flip this and man, Boral Sword can be targeted, folks. It's really good. So you just let Boral Sword come out or whatever come out. It's like, ah, nah. It's great. It's so fun just seeing everyone get really upset when you let them waste all their time for you to do that. Oh, and then you can just chain a Paleo because these are, these are normal. You can just chain and get your own bodies on board and go into your own Boral Sword. What a time. And then two crackdown thing. I don't have it at three. Three kind of gets to be a little obnoxious if they're not summoning like a lot of monsters. Two is a good number. I see it all the time. I can't tell you how many times I took Colossus. I took a Dengirsu, I think in like round seven. Satisfying taking people's stuff. And last of the traps, we have a trap that not a lot of people are playing that I think is a real sleeper card and is amazing. Get out. This came out in Rising Rampage, believe it or not. Anyone remembers this secret rare? I don't even think anyone plays this. Like I've literally never encountered this card other than with myself. It's amazing. I only play two because I don't have a third. If I had a third, I might play it, but I don't think it's necessary. I honestly saw this more than enough. You can trap trick it. It's great. It's a normal trap. Like this card is insane. You target two monsters your opponent controls that were special summoned from the extra deck and shuffle them back. I resolved it every time and it was so good because everyone, every all these combo decks, every deck is basically summoning out a thousand extra deck monsters and the second that second one hits the field you just flip this and it doesn't have to be when they're summoned I liked to do it when they were summoned just because they usually didn't have a solution to it but this card's nuts and it worked every time they would go into like Dengirsu, Longirsu, flip get out and they're just like oh cool I just did all of this and now they have to go back into the extra deck it's it's rad people sleep on this card I think it's nuts and then moving on to the spells which there are a whopping two of in this deck we have the busted scapegoat basically one turn Boral sword one turn Avermack. It's crazy. And then last but not least, Upstart. Yeah, just makes the deck 39 cards. It's great. I didn't see it a whole lot, but I did see it when I needed it, and it was it's pretty clutch. It's a, good, it's a good card. People ask me why I'm not playing Demise, like Card of Demise, and I just don't think it's necessarily helpful. I tried to play it in the deck, and whenever I saw it, it was inconvenient. Like, yeah, it's cool because you get the draws, but then you have to ditch your whole hand, and if I end up drawing into, like, I don't know, swapping another frog or, like, amazing cards and I can't set them or and I can't special them it's really inconvenient and then I have to ditch them and lose them and it sucks especially if I don't have a Ronin Toten engrave because then they're just two frogs that are gone so Demise just didn't work in this deck for me personally I don't want to ditch my whole hand wow it's the extra deck with Link Karibo mostly for scapegoat purposes only for scapegoat purposes <laughs> one Link Spider you can use Paleos to get him out you can use scapegoat to get him out Security Dragon. You can literally use any two monsters to get it out. There's no, you can use tokens, you can use your Paleos, you can use your frogs, you can use it all. And he's co-linked, you can bounce a card back to the hand. I didn't use this card once this weekend. This is Akashic. I swear she's good, she works out, especially if you can co-link a uh, Security Dragon to her. You can double bounce, it's really great. I just never needed her because half the time my opponents didn't summon to the zone right across from her, or she just wasn't needed and I could just go into anything else faster. One copy of Miss Starboy, not two, not three, people People ask me all weekend why I'm not playing more than one. I don't know why people play more than one. I get it, kind of, but you can recur everything. So I don't understand. Like when Toad goes to grave, and I really didn't go into him a lot. I only went into him like two, three times, maybe during all nine rounds. And then next up we have Mascarena. She is pretty OP. Uh, she's amazing. She let me get into Avermax pretty much for free. And then I pretty much won the game. Didn't use this one time. I don't know what else I would put in. I mean, Phoenix is just kind of a staple just for safety and caution, but didn't really need it. Unicorn, amazing. This card's great for the scapegoat play. Spin them, it's amazing. It's, I mean, it's Unicorn, we'll go into it. Big boy, best boy. We love Avermax, I can't tell you how many times. Got him on field and people were like, oh, can I read him again? And I'm like, yeah, read the fine print. There's a lot going on, especially with Mascarena. He can't be destroyed by card effects. He's basically unbeatable. The guy's nuts. He pretty much was my win condition for a lot of games. People pretty much scooped whenever they saw him. Boral Sword. And then mandatory, three toed. You're gonna go through him a couple times because people are probably gonna beat into him. You're gonna link climb. You're gonna go into stuff. You're gonna do a whole bunch of this and that. You just want three. He's an Omni to gate. He gets you free frogs. Ooh, okay, cool. And then last two extract monsters. We have Big Bird and Starving Venom. This will go into side deck stuff. Waking the Dragon, great card. Super Poly, also a great card. Win. Tokens! Woo! All 
right, onto the side deck. Two Lancia. I didn't really have the room for three. I saw it every time I needed it in like the whole two times I played against Thunder. I didn't use it against Orcus really at all because I just didn't need it. I had other, I have plenty of other side out targets for that deck. So this was not in my side deck for the weekend, but it is now. Thanks, Salad. I lost to Salad last round, round nine. I was super bummed about it because I went all day without playing against Salad. And I was like, oh, sick. I haven't had to play Salad once, which is not a fun matchup for me. And then of course, Round nine, when it matters, and I'm X2, I played against salads, and then I became X3. But everything's fine, it's all good. Uh, so I realized really quickly that this card is very important. I need it. I fixed my side deck around. I took out two Ghost Ogre and a Super Poly. Border. Any game where I was able to go first, I would side this in. I somehow would see him every time. Like, I don't know how, but he just finds himself at the top of my deck. He's amazing, I would open him and the game was over, especially against Salad game two. I obviously lost game one because it just was not happening. Uh, game two, sided in, opened it, and ba-bam, scoop. <laughs> it's amazing. I would never take this out of my side. Didn't use this card. Two Cosmic Cyclone, I just used it just in case that I needed to. I thought I'd play against Striker or something. I didn't. I literally only played against Orcus, Thunder, uh, Dino Thunder and some random rogue decks that this wasn't necessary with but I figured I'd have it because everyone's playing it and it gets rid of recurrable spell and traps. It's all good. Cut down to two super poly. I had three over the weekend. It worked out fine. There was nothing wrong with it. I just think the Nibiru's took priority now but bring out Starving Venom, use their resources. I mean can't get stopped. Can't stop, won't stop. Super poly's great. And last but not least my other win condition. My side deck has a lot of win conditions but Waking the Dragon. Wowie, Waking the Dragon came in clutch this weekend. This card is absolutely wonderful. I love it to death because game two, game three, they're gonna blow out my back row and they're gonna be like sending twin twisters out like nobody's business and I just have that bad boy set and I'm just like, yeah, pick your targets. Pick two, pick one, I don't care. Um, and they'd, <laughs> they'd hit it and I'd put it in the grave and I'm like, you ready for that one? And they're just like, oh no. And then Raid Raptor would come out and he's unaffected by card effects and Big Bird would just kind of sit there until they got mad and scooped. This card was amazing. I don't know. I, I've had it out of the side for a long time, but it's back and it's it's staying. All right, so going into the scapegoat combo, all you need is a scapegoat. It's this card. And one whole card in hand. On your opponent's end phase, you would just activate scapegoat and you get boop, 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 your four tokens. And then you go into your turn, draw a card. Doo -doo. Going to Link Spider. Boop. Going to Security Dragon. Use Security Dragon's effect to bounce a card back. Then, boop, boop. Unicorn. You now have two cards in hand. So, Unicorn effect. Ditch a card. Spin another card back. Wow, you've just cleared two cards off their field. And then, use your last token. Boop. For Link Karibo. And then, guess what, folks? Guess what that is? That's two extra deck monsters. And it goes into a four. Beep and you just cleared two cards off the field and now they're pretty much crying inside. Okay, and just to show another scapegoat combo to show the versatility and we can go into Boral Sword and more. End phase again, scapegoat, then you draw. Wow, look, you drew a trap trick, great. Link two into two non-link monsters for fast grant. And then link again, link spin, link again, creeps. Wow, look at that, four, beep, beep, beep. Oh my God, look. Your graveyard. If this happened, I mean, you could totally have paleos in here too. This is just like ideal setting. Banish dupe, summon Ron. Banish swap, summon Ron. Wow. Go to Toad. Amazing. You're just gonna ba bam, bam, ba bam. I did this a couple times, like during the first couple rounds. It's so free with Scapegoat to get into Boral Sword and Toad. Like, it's crazy. But yeah, now that you just sat through this really long explanation of every card in this deck and what's happening, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed myself. I don't know how this happened. I don't know how I went as far as I did with this deck, especially considering I have not been playing Yu-Gi-Oh very long. I started in January of this year. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Everyone was super nice. All the guys I played against were totally cool. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I met some awesome people. Sam was great. Everyone was great. I had a good time I'm going to Catskills this weekend. We'll see what happens. It was a totally awesome experience. So this is my deck profile. It wasn't perfect. It's not perfect. I'm gonna tweak it. I hope I explain this in a slightly helpful way. Thanks so much for watching all this. You guys are amazing. Follow us on Instagram, Crush Cards, YGO. Subscribe, comment, say things. I love you. <laughs> and check out our TCG. We're also Crush Cards on there too. We'll put links in the description and on this beautiful end page that'll come up in about two seconds. Stay beautiful, friends. Thank you.